Okay, so we're about a week removed from it, but I do still want to give my thoughts on it nonetheless. Uh, the fight of the year candidate. Um, I mean, shoot, it might wind up being my personal fight of the year, but fight of the year candidate at the very least between Shokimura and Kosei Tanaka for Kimura's WBO flyweight championship. Um, Tanaka managed to uh, overcome the, uh, the, the, I guess, the more naturally suited flyweight or the guy that's been compa- campaigning at flyweight longer and uh, defeated him by a majority decision in order to become the new WBO flyweight champion. And that makes Tanaka now, in only 12 professional fights, a three-world champion, also only 23 years of age. So, you know, he's just barely getting started. He, Tanaka, Kosei Tanaka is a guy that, when I had first seen him um, a couple of years ago, and I had first kind of heard from some of the bluster that he had been coming out with in the media and stuff, he's talking about how he wants to make history, how he wants to become a five-weight world champion. And then I actually watched him fight. I was thinking, like, you know, this, he's, this kid, he has a lot of, um, he has, he, he's very ambitious. You know, he, he wants to live up to a, to a high degree. You know, he's, he's kind of shooting for the stars and seeing where that gets him. Um, but I, I didn't think that he was going to get especially far, especially considering where he was a couple of years ago with regards to his overall skill set, considering how frequently he actually would get hit um, back then. But he's made a, quite a bit of improvements um, since then, and I think those improvements allowed him to actually defeat Kimura. Um, back on Monday when this fight took place. Um, this was really a great fight. Uh, you know, people, they talk about a lot of fight of the year candidates that they'll still have that kind of feel out period. They'll still have maybe a round or two where the two guys are kind of trying to gauge each other, trying to time each other, trying to figure out what each other's got. Or otherwise, there'll be maybe a round or two off, so to speak, where it's like one of the guys taking a round off, the other guy's taking a round off, or, or like maybe the action isn't quite as... Um, as explosive as, as uh, some other portions of the fight and the shifts in tide and so on and so forth. Um, but with Kimura and Tanaka, and, you know, I, I felt like this going in, um, it was pretty much just an, an eruption from the opening bell. As soon as that bell rang, the two of them were trying to see what each other had. They, they pretty much came out guns a-blazing, fists a-firing, and we're, <laughs> we're going at it, man. Um, it wasn't entirely surprising to me to see that, especially from Sho Kimura considering the fact that Kimura is, is a type of fighter that fights that way. You know, he's a high-pressure, high-volume type of a fighter. He tries to kind of uh, defeat you by virtue of attrition, by virtue of physicality, by virtue of, like, my stamina is better than yours. I'm stronger than you. I'm, I'm harder than you. I'm, phys- I'm more physical than you. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to break you down, weigh you down, get rid of you. Um, that's what he did to Zhou Ming in order to win the title in the first place. That's what he did to former WBC and champion and also another former Olympian in uh, Toshi Garashi. And um, that's what he was trying to do here to uh, Kosei Tanaka. The only thing, though, is Tanaka, even though he was coming up from previously 105 pounds and 108 pounds, um, as I mentioned before, you know, he's talking about being uh, wanting to become a five-weight world champion. He is a guy that at 105 especially, and um, 108 maybe to a slightly lesser degree, was, you know, really cutting a lot of weight in order to make those weight classes. I think flyweight is, is finally the weight class where he's, his body, I, th- I think, is a bit more suited in terms of being able to make the weight both um, healthfully and comfortably. And I think it showed in this fight, you know, it showed in his last couple of fights, but it showed in this fight especially, I think, too, um, just by virtue of how light on his feet he was, by virtue of how good his stamina was, and by virtue of the fact that he was able to keep up pace with Kimura by and large throughout most of the fight. And he's also, you know, uh, you know as I mentioned with Kimura, if, if Kimura is almost like a, a miniature version of like a, a Glenn Johnson, a kind of a high pressure, high volume type of like gun you down, wear you down type of a fighter, Kosei Tanaka would be more like akin to um, kind of the classic, um, I guess, uh, American boxer puncher. You know, he's a, he's a bit of a, maybe like a mini Keith Thurman, as it were, you know, in, in terms of his style, if you're trying to compare him to anybody who, who, he most, who he's most similar to. Um, where he is kind of a bit of an all-rounder, you know, good footwork, good hand speed, but he's still trying to make an impression on you with his power, with his explosiveness, with the fact that he's like he can kind of uh, sidestep, you know, sidestep to quick to the left, quick to the right, boom, boom, like hit you with like a quick two-punch, three-punch combination, and maybe the last punch of that combination he's really sitting on, trying to like make an impression on you, trying to hurt you, trying to trying to break you. Um, and also, like, the, the left hooks, especially. The left hook to the body is probably his signature punch, but um, he landed quite a few left hooks to the jaw where that, he, that made an impression on Kimura as well. Um, especially in the second round, you know, this, going into the second round, he landed a beautiful, beautiful left hook on Kimura that rocked Kimura. Um, had, he had uh, Tanaka going, like, for the finish pretty, pretty early on, uh, but Kimura was able to survive it, and he made uh, Tanaka pay in kind for that also. He, there, was a, there was a few times where... 
um, Tanaka would almost kind of lift Kimura up off his feet in the midst of Kimura throwing his own punches. But um, if he was a little bit too hasty to try and go in to uh, capitalize on that or try to finish him, um, Kimura would make him pay for it very, very much so. Um, you know, Kimura definitely showed his inside skill in there as well. Um, Tanaka seemed to make it easier on himself in the rounds where he was a bit more so on his toes, kind of sticking and moving, boxing and moving, using his foot, his, uh, foot speed and his agility, his, his hand speed as well. Um, just because, you know, he has the advantage. He had those kind of ad ag agile athletic advantages over Kimura, whereas I think Kimura still had a stamina and a, maybe just kind of a physical strength edge, or like endurance edge over, um, over Tanaka. And so there were uh, a bunch of times where like the, they were engaged in that kind of trench warfare where Kimura would actually be able to outslug Tanaka, even though Tanaka, I would personally say, is probably the bigger puncher of the two in terms of like power for power, like punch for punch, who actually hits harder. Um, you know, Tanaka, I think, has definitely carried his power up um, through the weight classes that he's been through. Um, he, was, he did it enough to at least dissuade, you know, even a, a, a straight up knockout artist in Angel Acosta in the past um, you know, the current WBO 108-pound uh, champion, Angel Lacoste. And, you know, that even brings me to a bit of an aside. Um, now in only 12 fights, of course, also, um, Tanaka has two current champions on his record. He defeated Vic Solidar, so he was essentially the guy that, def that kept Vic Solidar from becoming a champion, that kept Vic Solidar from stamping his own name in history, from, be you know, becoming a great fighter in his own right. But once Tanaka left the 105-pound division, Saladar was able to win a world title. He actually just won it um, earlier this year when he decisioned Ryu Yamanaka in Japan. So Saladar is, a, is one of the guys. And then Angel, the aforementioned Angel Acosta, who after Tanaka defeated him, um, Acosta went on to win the WBO 108-pound title. And he, of course, still holds that to this day, as I mentioned. Um, you know... Going into this fight, they probably fought a, a relatively similar level of opposition. Um, Tanaka maybe has, you know, the guys that are still doing things a bit more so, whereas uh, Kimura's um, biggest wins over the likes of Zoshiming and, uh, and Igarashi are guy, against guys that did more so in the past who maybe are on the downside of their careers. Um, but, I mean, regardless of that, they, this fight was an excellent fight. I mean, it was pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe warfare uh, for the full 12 uh, very, very little clinching. There was only, I could probably count the number of times that they clinched on, on like one hand, really. Um, but it was a excellent fight. Um, you know, Tanaka got off to an early lead, I thought. That he won the, like, it seemed like was kind of winning as he was going into the win middle rounds. But then Kimura, um, like I said, with his stamina, with his endurance, with his high volume, started to really get back into the fight, and Tanaka started to slow down just a, just a bit. Um, Tanaka managed to catch a second win, you know, from like the seventh round on. Uh, but even still, it was pretty much a tit-for-tat type of a fight, and there was a lot of close rounds in it. Uh, personally, um, I did have um, Kosei Tanaka winning, um, seven rounds to five. Uh, you know, it was an excellent fight. You know, even shit, even in the, in the final round, actually, um, Kimura, I thought, ended th that round, ended the fight um, stronger than Tanaka did. You know, he went out looking to, to really prove something, really looking to hold on to his title. Um, Tanaka went out looking for the knockout. In those later rounds, I think, because he felt like he really needed to make that final impression on the fight. Um, and I think it was the 12th round where they had this series where they, the, the two of them both threw like consecutive, like five consecutive right hands in a row at each other. <laughs> and they were both, it's like they were both grazing each other or one would land better than the other. And they tried again, they tried again, they tried again. It was, it was, it was very entertaining. It was a really good fight between these two. Um, I wouldn't necessarily mind seeing a rematch at some point in the future, but... And it seems like that might not necessarily happen. Kimura well, was even talking about retiring, which, uh, I mean, I really hope he doesn't do. Because, um, I mean, I think he's, he's, a, he's a boon to, uh, to the flyweight division especially. Or even if he moves up to Superfly, it would be a, an excellent addition there as well. Kosei Tanaka, as I mentioned before, you know, he's 23. He's getting to that age where he's, his body's probably filling out a bit more so. Um, and, you know, he may even struggle to make flyweight at some point in the near future. Um, you know, as of right now, I'd say probably his next best option in terms of value for money and va like value, the, the value proposition between both risk and reward. Um, I'd say Ryochi Taguchi, the former um, unified light flyweight champion, Ryochi Taguchi, a guy that actually a lot of people, including myself, wanted to see him unify against back when they were both at 108 pounds. Um, that's still a very big fight. You know, Taguchi, of course, lost his, um, his unified belts, the WB and the IBF earlier this year to Hecky Butler in a very, very closely contested fight. Um, it was a, he lost it by, I think it was a split decision. 
that Butler defeated him by, or it was a majority. I think I think it was a majority actually. But Taguchi still looms as you know one of the bigger names in in Japanese boxing, especially um, Japanese you know world level boxing, world championship level boxing, and you know even as a flyweight, um, I think would probably still loom as a guy that instantly is uh, you know a top ten fighter at, at, in the flyweight division, even though he hasn't even fought there yet, um, at least not recently anyway. But um, you know he's a guy that's very tall as well, so I think uh, filling up. Or, or maybe not cutting as much just to make flyweight um, probably won't do him very much harm considering the guy's five six and a half. So I mean he's even taller than Tanaka himself. But I think that's probably the um, the most obvious next fight for Tanaka unless he fights maybe like a um, like a voluntary defense against one of the WBO ranked guys. Um, otherwise, um, going further into the future, you know I could very well see him potentially moving up to super flyweight trying to uh, get his uh, four belt run on. Like Chocolatito has done already, like Donnie Nietes has been trying to do, like his countryman Kazuto Yoka has been trying to do. And especially if um, the potential Kazuto Yoka versus Donnie Nietes fight for the vacant WBO championship actually does happen, and especially if Yoka was to win that fight, Yoka versus Tanaka would be a mega fight in Japan. You know, they'll both very easily probably make. Um, you know, a uh, million dollars plus for that fight. Ioka most definitely because Ioka has been the ratings superstar in, of Japan for the past like half decade running. Um, you know, doing like seven, eight million viewers a fight, even just in the Kanto region, which is uh, you know not even the whole of of Japan. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that make a big deal about like you know certain American fighters or, or certain um, British fighters doing uh, you know a few million, but you know the Ioka in particular is a guy that's been doing like double that. Um, time in and time out. He's, he's a superstar in Japan. A lo- large part of it has to do with the fact that his uncle was a champion also, um, Hiroki, Hiroki Ioka back in the uh, early 90s. But um, Tanaka is a guy that's kind of, uh, kind of bringing, like, bringing in the baton, you know, bringing in the, bringing in the, uh, the new era for uh, Japanese boxing along with the likes of like, Naya Inoue. And uh, I guess to a lesser degree, Ryota Murata, to a lesser degree, Daigo Higa, since he, Higa recently lost. Um, and matter of fact, the guy that beat Higa would actually be a great fight um, for Tanaka as well, Christopher Rosales. But um, as I mentioned before, I'm not sure if uh, that fight necessarily makes the, the greatest sense in the world, just in terms of um, both, uh, you know, what makes dollars make sense and things of that nature. You know, I'd definitely like to see the fight, um, but... I think there's other avenues for Tanaka where he would get both more money as well as more credit, um, critically speaking, um, you know, in, in, bo- in both rights. But um, Tanaka versus Yoko would be a, a mega fight over there. Um, I think even Tanaka versus Nietes would be an excellent fight. You know, I could, see, I could very well see Tanaka maybe eventually fighting somebody like a Chocolatito as well, um, almost a kind of a young lion versus old lion type of a, of a deal. And, I mean, who knows, if he keeps on winning, he may get, one day reach his goal of getting all the way up to Bantamweight and maybe eventually taking on the winner of the World Boxing Super Series, um, whether it's Nai Inoue or Zelani Tete or Emmanuel Rodriguez or somebody else entirely. Um, but especially if it happened to be Inoue, um, an Inoue versus a uh, Tanaka fight for Tanaka's fifth world title and, you know, ostensibly what would be uh, Inoue's uh, fourth weight class uh, title and uh, it puts you know a potentially a unified one at that um, hypothetically speaking would be um, something else entirely that would be like an all time great level uh, clash of of of, uh, of champions there but um, you know Tanaka is really doing a, a, a fantastic job you know he's done a, a great job of um, proving my original uh, thoughts of him wrong um, to this point and you know I'm definitely not a doubter of his anymore I think the guy is, is seriously talented he's very very skilled he's getting better fight by fight and he's definitely going to have to get better as well um, you know especially as he moves up in weight um, he's not going to be able to completely rest on his natural talent his natural athleticism his natural strength power explosiveness speed um, he's going to have to utilize those skills um, in, a, in a more uh, concrete way and in a less lackadaisical way in, in, in that sense. You know, uh, he's going to have to ma- like fight the fight almost like the way that he did fight against Angel Acosta where he was very wary of Acosta's power considering Acosta's won all of his fights by knockout. Um, so he's, he's going to have to approach the likes of a Chocolatito like that. He's going to have to approach the likes of an Ioko or a Nietes or a Sriza Kid or, a, or an Inoue um, in that manner and um, try to utilize his, uh, his abilities um, in a much sharper way than he sometimes does. But, you know, he's, he is still a growing fighter. Um, as for Kimura, he's talked about potentially retiring. I hope that he doesn't. Because, like I said, he'd be an excellent addition against any other fighters um, at flyweight or super flyweight. But 
that's all I got for this one. I will catch you guys in the next one. And the link is going to be in the description. Link to the fight. Check it out. Peace.